Hi, I'm Marcus with the IndieMusicLab.com. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the five steps for producing an ambient indie track. This is the kind of sound that you hear with artists like Novo Amor, Bon Iver, and Talos, just to name a few. So if you're going for that ambient indie sound, you wanna make sure that you incorporate all five of these elements. Let's dive in. So the song that I'm gonna be using to demonstrate this is a remake slash cover of the song Anchor by Novo Amor, and it sounds like this. Right, so this is the style, this is the sound that we are working with that we're trying to achieve here. The first key component to an ambient indie song is a delicate and beautiful sounding vocal. So as you know, vocals for this type of style are crucially important and not only how they're produced or mixed or edited, but it all starts with the vocal take. So the first thing that I wanna mention when it comes to recording this type of vocal is you gotta be delicate, you gotta be warm, you gotta be soft. And because it's not like, and I hear it's not, and I hear your ship is coming in. It's not even, that is the antithesis of what we're going for here. Instead, and I hear your ship is coming in. It's literally that delicate and soft. And as far as mixing this type of sound, I'll leave a link in the description below to a video that I did where I walk you through precisely step-by-step step how to get this vocal sound inside your DAW. So we're not gonna get into all of that in this video. This is more of an overview of all the elements that you need for ambient indie track. One more real quick tip about getting these types of vocals to sound good is you can absolutely experiment with adding stacks, right? Where it's not just one vocal, Instead, you have maybe uh, two, which you, you hear this a ton on like Bonnie Iver's early records. Novo Amor does it a ton, and in this song specifically, he does it, where, as you can hear, you've got panned left and right. You've got two takes doing what I call the share the spotlight technique, where you just record two separate takes, and you pan one left and pan one right. These are panned at about 70 left, 70 right. And this type of stacking can really help accentuate that lush quality that you often want for this style. So the second key component to producing an ambient indie song is, this is like an either or thing. You either need a finger picked acoustic guitar, or you can use like a dreamy electric guitar sound. Now, a great example of this difference is a finger-picked acoustic guitar would be like Novo Amor style, right? Where you've got this. Or if you want more of that dreamy quality, then that would be more like what you would hear cigarettes after sex do. So those are the first two components. You need a delicate and beautiful sounding vocal, and you also need either a finger-picked acoustic guitar or a dreamy electric guitar. Now, the third key component to this type to this type of sound is a warm hall reverb. Now you can use any reverb that you might have inside your DAW that allows you to uh, add this hall type sound. So what I use is Valhalla Vintage Verb. It's one of my favorite plugins in general and it sounds amazing. So this is the concert hall and it sounds like this. And then you can obviously experiment depending on the song with how long you want the decay to be. So for this one, I have it around two seconds. Sometimes you can go even more than that to really uh, make it even more lush and even more of that ambient sound. Or you can turn it up. Or down. There's without the reverb. Notice the difference it makes without the reverb. That reverb really sets the tone for this type of sound and 
because ambient is literally in the title of this subgenre. So you absolutely need some semblance of a church or hall type of reverb because it's really going to help set the mood and set the tone for this type of quality. Now the fourth component you need to produce an ambient indie song is similar to this hall reverb and it is you need some type of atmospheric pad. Now this doesn't technically have to be like a synth pad. This can be more just like a droney sound. You can use electric guitar to create that dreamy pad-like effect. It's the effect that we're after, not specifically pulling up a synth uh, instrument and finding a pad sound per se. So what I did here for this track was I just scrolled through some presets in Omnisphere and I landed on this one. It's just beautiful, it's there helping to fill up that space. And then here's in context with the mix. And then here's without it. Without the pad, it sounds just more kind of like a straight up indie folk without the ambient quality versus when you add in this pad, that is what accentuates that uh, atmospheric ambient sound. Alright, so that is the pad. You need that. Now, one more to go, and this one is my favorite one of all, and it is this. Leave in at least one mistake. Now, a perfect example of this is if you listen to the original by Novo Amor on his song Anchor, you hear he's in drop D tuning on that low E string, and because it's extra, it's looser than it normally is, it allows you, if you hit it hard enough, it'll rattle against the fretboard, creating this type of effect, which I, um, which I did here as well. So as you can hear there, right? Isn't that cool? But that's technically a mistake, but it sounds authentic. It adds a sense of humanness to the track. And so if you can have one or two or even three or four of these types of moments in your song where it's technically a mistake, but it's not too egregious, it can really add to the quality and the depth of that track. And this could also include things like timing of the vocals, where if you're doing stacked vocals like I did here with one left and one right, maybe don't time them up perfectly. Maybe have a moment or two where they're slightly off. This type of thing just helps create and reinforce that mood of, of ambience, of atmosphere, of imperfection, because you don't want it to be perfect. Because you're not trying to make a four on the floor EDM beat or a chart topping pop song. You want to understand the sound and the genre that you're aiming for. And then if you can leave in a mistake or two, it can just be a beautiful thing. And I, and I talked about this a lot on my review of the song Skinny Love by Bonnie Vare on the What We Can Learn From series, where half the time I spent talking about just how amazing it was, the fact that they left these mistakes in and how respectable that is, because it adds to the authenticity of the track. So don't forget to leave at least one or two mistakes leave them in because they can actually make your song better as counterintuitive as that sounds. All right, so now let's recap this and bring this home. So the five key components to an ambient indie track are a beautiful and delicate vocal, right? And then you need some type of either finger picked guitar or dreamy electric guitar sound. Number three, you need a lush hall reverb. Number four, you need some type of atmospheric pad. And number five, you need to leave in a mistake or two. All right, now if you wanna dive deeper into vocal EQ and you wanna get a better understanding of how to properly EQ your vocals and actually fix problems, then I've got the perfect gift for you. It is my visual guide for fixing vocal EQ problems. And what this is, is eight problems, eight solutions, where if your problem is, say, it's your vocal is too muddy or it's too bright or it's not bright enough, I show you visually 
what these cuts and these boosts look like on an EQ. That way you're not lost making 15 or 20 EQ moves trying to get the right sound. So this will really help give you some clarity and start making EQ moves that actually work and that actually fix problems. And you just get a better understanding of what EQ does and how it should be used. So link is in the description below. It's 100% free. It's really gonna help you out. So be sure to check that out before you go. Thanks so much for watching, my friend. I will see you in the next video. Happy music making. See ya.